I don't understand it. It would I would not have believed that such things could happen on our farm. It must be due to some fault in ourselves. The solution as I see it is to work harder. From now onward, I shall get up a full hour earlier. The animals huddled around Clover, not speaking. The knoll where they were lying gave a wide perspective across the countryside. Most of Animal Farm was within their view. The long pasture stretching down to the main road, the hayfield, the spinnery, the drinking pool, the plowed fields where young wheat and thick green uh, was thick and green and the red roofs from the farm building where smoke curled from the chimneys. It was a clear spring evening. The grass and the, and the bursting hedges were gilded by the level rays of the sun. Never had the farm with a kind of surprise they remembered that it was their farm. Every inch of it was their property appeared to the animals so desirable of a place. As Clover looked down the hillside, her eyes filled with tears. If she could have spoken her thoughts, it would have been to say that this was not what they had aimed at when they had set out, set out themselves years ago to work to overthrow the human race. These scenes of terror, slaughter, were not what, had looked, what she had looked forward to on that night when old Major first stirred them to rebellion. If she herself had had any picture of the future, it had been of a society of animals free from hunger and the whip, all equal, each working accordance to their capacity, the strong protecting the weak. As she had protected the lost bro uh, broad of ducklings with her foreleg on the night Major gave his speech. Instead, she did not know why they had come to a time when no one dared speak his mind, when fierce, growling dogs roamed everywhere, and when you had to watch your comrades torn to pieces after confessing shocking crimes. There was no thought of the rebellion or disobedience in her mind. She knew that, even as things were, they were far better off than they had been in the days of Jones, and that before all else, it was needful to prevent the return of the human beings. Whatever happened, she would remain faithful, work hard, carry out the orders that were given to her, and accept the leadership of Napoleon. But still, it was not for this that she, had, she and all the animals had hoped, to toil, had hoped and toiled. It was not for this that they had built the windmill and faced the bullets of Jones's gun. Such were her thoughts, thoughts she lacked the words to express. <laughs> Marcus Conti reporting. Uh, a reading from Animal Farm. Powerful, insightful, right? We look to the great prophets, the prophets of a time before us, to tell us what the hell is going on. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the LARPers today. I know, I know, it's a guilty pleasure. But um, you got to ask yourselves, why do we LARP? Why? What is the goddamn point? Why LARP? What is a LARP? Live action role play. So LARPing, right? It's it's an art form. It's a phenomena on the internet. Because we're so disconnected from each other physically. You're over here. You're over there. I'm over here. You're in LA. I'm in, I'm in New York City. You're in Missouri. I'm in Florida. We're disconnected by distance. We're separated by distance, but we're connected by our commonality. And that's where the LARP kicks in. That's where it is. That's where it's exhilarating and very often highly destructive. <laughs> Characters are assassinated. 
Characters are exalted to fame. The fame go. <laughs> right, so that's where we are as a LARPing community, right? Because our commonalities bring us together and intensify. Right? And the people that we're not, we have nothing in common, like in real life, you see people that you have nothing in common with, right? And you just walk right by them. You don't even notice them, but somehow they affect your consciousness in a work environment, in a social environment, in a bar, there's clicks and grooves, right? But in, in the internet LARPing world, there is, there is a, a separation from us and them them over there and us and it's often this hard to hard to figure out who is them and who is us right? so so basically what what the LARP is I'm trying to define it because it's something new and it is a phenomena and I'm gonna name names I'm gonna I'm gonna crush a couple of people because they deserve it or maybe not I might be exemplifying them. There's too many people exercising around here. I feel like I'm on the fucking exercise path down here. God damn it. So anyway, so the, the, the point is this. The LARP is like a, like a soap opera. Remember the soap opera in the days of soap operas? We had soap operas on TV where it was, it was a live action role play. You were married to somebody and somebody was fucking your husband, right? Or fucking your wife. Or it turns out you were married to, you were married to this man, and he's, and he's, he's a homosexual. <laughs> he's got a boyfriend, right? Or, or, all my children, or as the world turns. Remember these shows that we used to watch, or my grandmother used to watch, and I would watch by, by, by uh, default. I would be sitting on the couch saying, "Grandma, what the hell is going on, man? Why are all these people so miserable?" What are they talking about? Right? And you figure it out. Right? And you get sucked into the story. Well, that's what the, the, the modern day LARP is. right? For good or bad. But there is a, a very dark side of it. A very a, uh, a destructive side of it. A side that hasn't been quite defined yet. Right? So, while all that's going on. Right? What is the point of it? It's a kind of, a kind of an anesthesia. The LARP is an anesthesia for daily living, just like the soap opera was, just like a cigarette or a drink or a visit to the doctor for some narcotics. It's an anesthesia for living. Rather than come out on the path and run and exercise one's mind and body or sit in meditation to understand one's behavior, we reach for something. Desire is what drives it, really. A desire to feel something, to feel connected to something, to feel whole, to feel a part of, part of a gang, part of a community, part of a group. Like being a, you know, a drummer in a rock band or a guitar player, or a singer. You're part of the group or you're a groupie. You're in the group. You're not in the group, but you're a groupie. So, while all that's going on, Hong Kong falls to communism. The world is spinning around outside of us. Epstein, Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein, the, the serial, the greatest serial pedophile of our time, amasses a billion dollars, screws countless teenage girls, incriminates and, and compromises countless number of billionaires. And then dies one day in a, in a jail cell. Or did he buy his freedom? Do, will we ever know? Will we ever know? Did he buy his freedom or did he... Did he did, was, he, was he KO'd in the, in the cell? Will we ever know? I don't know. 99% of the population controlled by 1%. We let it happen. A 1% ruling class runs 99% of the country. How fucked up is that? This is what we use, this is what the LARP covers. The mass shootings, the homelessness, the drug addiction, the alcoholism in the country, 
Our voice is drowned by fake news, fake elections. So, so again, the, the LARP is, is, the, is the extremes coming together. We agree on this, and we agree on that, and somehow we all come together. And we agree, right? Or we're quietly observing it, as the journalist does, as the, as the reporter of the LARP does, and observes the behavior to reflect it back so that we understand what it is. Because nobody is exempt. Nobody is exempt from the human experience. But the LARP, it, it exemplifies something. It, it exemplifies that, that need to, to be a part of something. That's what it does. So, so for example, and it, it's very juvenile is what it really is, right? So in, in high school you have, you know, you've got fist fights, you've got, you've got people dating, you've got people, people um, talking about the people that they dated, right? All this, all this fucking shit going on, right? All this fucking bullshit going on in high school. And that's really, the LARP is very reminiscent. So let's talk about some of them. Right now we've got Dave Acton. Oh, Dave, I said your name. Oh, you're f so famous. The most famous LARPer in all of the internet right now is David Acton, the failed actor, David Schwager, the failed actor who whips incomprehensible and illogical theories, whips up these, these crazy, crazy conspiracy theories, the documented conspiracy theorist Dave Akin from California the LA failed actor has risen to the top of the LARP he's hot he's highlighted they're they're hosting him on teenage FBI <laughs> oh he found his level teenage FBI you haven't heard it's like the new club oh all the cool kids hang out all the deadbeat L.A. boy rapers, the boy stalkers, the guys that used to fuck over the boy bands, right? They're all in their 50s now. Then they all got together, and then they got this record label, Vapor Bat. <laughs> Vapor Bat. <laughs> right? The fucking Vapor Bat. Ooh, Lipo. Lepo. Right? All these weird characters, right? And they're, they're exalting Dave Acton, the failed actor. Hi, this is Dave. Hey, this is Dave. Huh? Fandango! Fandango! <laughs> he gets to be a child again. He gets to be a child again, but this is, this is Dave Acton, the frivolous, the man who files 20 frivolous motions in federal court. To, to to annihilate his his brother's gay lover Jason Goodman, to to smear his his retarded brother George Webb, the greatest conspiracy theorist on the internet, <laughs> weaving one crackpot theory after another. <laughs> right? He hates George. He hates his brother. He hates his brother so much he'll smear anybody. He'll fuck over anybody just to get in front of his fucking brother. His brother's an asshole. I hate my brother, Dave Acton. I hate my brother, George Webb. He's an asshole. He likes Jason Goodman. I'm going to sue him. I'm going to sue him. Fucking George Webb. I hate you, George Webb. I'm your brother, Dave Acton, and I fucking hate you. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, right? I'm gonna smear you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hang out with Aleppo and Thomas. Show me the burger who fucks boys in L.A. The L.A. fucking porn star who won't show his face. None of you fucking guys will show your goddamn face because you're fucking afraid. You're afraid to let people see who you are. 
because you're phonies and you're hiding. You're, you're frightened little little boys ready to fuck over anybody and step over anybody just to grab that spotlight for one minute to have that 15 minutes of fame. That's all it's about, man. Right? Right, Dave? Do I got you down, Pat? And Dave's a good example. He's not the only one. There's so many of them. There's Defango, who, for whatever reason, guys can't stand fucking Defango. God, you guys hate Defango. I love Defango. I love Defango. Defango, I love you. <laughs> why do you guys hate Defango so much? You know why you hate Defango, Dave? I tell you why you hate Defango. Because they, because Defango fucked you guys over early on. The crowd sourced the fake news. You remember when Defango? You remember when Defango found that he he gave George Webb and Jason Goodman two idiots, two politic political idiots have no idea what's going on in the political world. Make up everything. Someone's got to tell them what's going on. Oh yeah, fucking what's going on? Oh yeah, the DNC. Yeah, the file. Yeah, I got the file. Oh yeah, Seth Rich. I heard of him. I got the file. He's got we got Seth Rich's file. Right? And Defango pitched them this ridiculous idea. Right? He went back to WikiLeaks a year ago, a year before the fact in 2017. Back in 2016, WikiLeaks had dumped the DNC files on WikiLeaks. Everybody knew it. And Defango put that shit together, packaged it up in a file, and gave it to George Webb and Jason Goodman like it was something brand new. <laughs> and they fucking ran with it. And then spoofed the file. Who spoofed the file? Remember who spoofed the file? <laughs> uh, they're two functioning idiots, right? Jason Goodman and George Webb, two functioning idiots, and, and Defango played them like children. <laughs> right? That's why they hate Defango. Right? Well, drunken George Webb, drunken alcoholic George Webb, fucking Jason, letting Jason Goodman fuck his ass on his couch. Right? He's out there. He's drinking. And, so, and, 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 and he's got this vision. He's got an FBI guy telling him. FBI guy's telling him. He's telling him. The port of Charleston, there's a bomb on the port on the boat. There's a fucking bomb on the boat. Get the bomb. A dirty bomb. It's a bomb. It's uranium. It's deep uranium on the boat. It's gonna blow up. Port of Charleston. Get on it. <laughs> Those idiots run down and do it, right? A uh, bunch of morons, right? But there's a, there's a, and then there's a dark side. There's the, the, the Thomas Schoenberger. Oh, just to say his name is to invoke fear, right? Creepy guy running around, spamming the shit out of you. I'll send you 500 emails, you fucking cunt. You fucking New York cunt, Marcus Conti. I fucking hate you. <laughs> and you don't even hear his voice. All you see is his typing. The coward. <laughs> I'm gonna get a cat lady after you. The fucking lady with the tooth, I'm gonna get you. That lady's gonna get you. <laughs> You're on her side. You're on his side. You're on, you like the fango. <laughs> uh, but this guy's a different type of creep. This guy will go into your own, your private business. This guy will call your wife's psychiatrist and pretend to be a doctor. He'll commit felonies just to fuck you over. Just to scare the shit out of you. To let you know just how close to him, just how close he really is. <laughs> but he's really very far away. <laughs> he's not even in the same fucking world. <laughs> well, Lepo. Who the fuck is Lepo? Lepo! Lepo, the faggot, the faggot LA failed rock star. Oh, Lepo, he plays such glorious music on the Everbat Records. <laughs> it was supposed to be about truth. See, the LARP, the LARP con confuses. You see my point? Is that the LARP, all this drama, this rage, this um, fear porn, for lack of a better term, it covers the bigger picture. 
the the world events the pain of of trying to come to the internet to do something new and innovative and productive for society but instead we tear each other up and all the ins you know the people below it it doesn't just affect each other the larpers but but the thousands of of fans that the larpers attract uh, is it is there a necessary place in in our world for it do we need people like do we need people like Jason Goodman stuffing an umbrella in your face when you say hello to him do we need people like George Webb walking around Washington making three and four videos a day obviously in need of a drink where his hands are rattling like this just lying saying making up sto outrageously ridiculous stories about Epstein how it now has to do with guns and and Iran Contra or his or his retarded brother Dave Acton who who says he says the judge threw out my case because she was siding with Jason Goodman <coughs> because Jason Goodman has something to do with <coughs> <laughs> the flight 800 downing <laughs> it's so and together two pieces of garbage right there's more truth there's more fucking truth in this in this fucking garbage pal than there is in any of these guys right the knights in shining armor as as the judge as the, as the Southern District Judge has called them. They see themselves as knights in shining armor, right? But really, all they're doing is inflating their own egos. All they're doing is, is, is following, uh, following some sort of muse, sort of, and <clears throat> elevating their own ego with some, with some view of a payoff in the future. And what is that payoff? Is the payoff a money payoff? Do they get paid? Everybody thinks, oh, Thomas Schoenberger, who do you work for? I know who you work for, Conti. Who do you work for? They all say that, right? Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Me. Conti works for the people. <laughs> Conti works for the people. Conti works for for the greater good now you you it would be hard for you guys to understand that because you've got your heads up your assholes <laughs> full of lies full of corruption right? failed actors failed writers failed record producers guys that claim to play piano never seen them play the piano before fucking mr. mr. hamburger doesn't even play the piano He's a fucking LA fag boy how many fag boys did you fuck? Oh my god. I'd hate to think about that. It's not wrong being a fag, but you know, let's call it what it is, man. You're a fag boy. You're a fag fucker. <clears throat> then you got your fag hags that like fag fuckers. The old man, the old 50 year old man who fucks the, the teenage boy. He's got the fag hag. He's got a fag hag. That's, a, that's the woman. <laughs> but the older woman in tow. Ah, you guys wish it was 1980 again. You're walking on the L.A. Strip, right? You're walking down the L.A. Strip with your long hair. I still got my hair. When you had hair, you fucking guys. All right, walking down the L.A. Strip, cool as shit. Drinking in a whiskey bar. Oh, yeah, fucking cool. I saw that band. Oh, yeah, T-Rex. Oh, yeah, fucking <laughs> white punks on dope. <laughs> guys are living in the past, man. Guys are, guys are has-beens. You guys are all has-beens, the LARPers. Oh, my gosh. And there's a new community. There's, there's Lestat. Who is Lestat? Oh, he's, he's, he's Mexican. He can't be one of us. <laughs> it's smearing Lestat because he's Mexican. <laughs> and you never meet any of these people. You never. I mean, I, I unfortunately have met a few of them, you know. Whether I liked it or not. But mostly they're just 
they're just people that pop on your internet and you say, what the hell is going on with these guys? They're all fucking crazy. Well, yeah, they all are crazy, that's for sure. But what is the motivation? Now, this is the graduates. Oh, Quinn Michaels. Oh, Quinn Michaels. <laughs> Let's talk about Quinn Michaels. Driving around in the car. <clears throat> I live in my car. I'm so smart. I'm so... I'm. Oh, my God. You cannot believe how fucking smart I am. I was a programmer at Nike. I was a senior programmer at Nike. And I know more about the Internet than anybody. I know all about what's going on. And, and, and I live in my car, and fuck you. Fuck you, Conti. <laughs> Gay Quinn Michaels, Jason Goodman's fag lover, <laughs> who lives in his car. Who all I did was ask, hey, hey Quinn, you want to come on my show? And like, fuck you, dude, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you trying to get, what are you trying to get the best of me? What, what, hey, Conti, what are you talking about? I don't know, I don't know you, I don't know you. I don't know you, Conti, I don't know you. Why are you coming on my internet? Why are you coming on my chat room? What are you coming on my chat room for, Conti? Uh, relax, gay boy. <laughs> relax, man, just, just, just poking around. All paranoid, right? Fucking so paranoid. That's what happens, excuse me. <laughs> when you lie when you lie all the time when all you do is lie like a rug as my grandmother used to say ah he lies like a rug <laughs> when you lie like a rug karma is a motherfucker because it comes out in your character and we know that you're lying right? we know that you're lying Dave Acton piles and piles of frivolous paperwork in courts Dragging everybody and his mother and his two other brothers that we don't talk about but may someday talk about. That we know all about. Right? Drags everybody into the fray. Look at how I am the knight in shining armor to my family. I am... I am... I am... I don't know what I am. I am working on the, for the honor of my family, the Schwagarts. My father invented the cell phone, and I'm going to defend his fame from my crazy George Webb Schwagger, alcoholic George in Washington telling lies. I'm going to save my family's reputation from this insane person. <laughs> Woo! Man, what a web we, we, we uh, weave. What a web we weave. So that's my Marcus Conti reporting. Trying to trying to dip into the emotion of the LARPer, trying to understand it better. Help me understand it, please, Dave Acton. Please, I know you'll make 25 videos. Conti! Conti! You tried to pull a stunt! I saw that stunt you pulled, Conti! Who do you think you are, Conti? Who do you think you are? Get out of my yard! Stop trying to interfere with my fame. <laughs> God damn, you guys will do anything for a little, a little. Uh, Dave has got it now, man. He's got his vapor, vapor guys, man. He's got, he's got Schoenberger, the guy who fucking commits felonies, right? Calling people's, calling people's wives doctors, calling them up, harassing people, ripping people off for 400 grand here, 1,000 there. Guy's a fucking serial creep. Now Dave Acton loves him. Woo Schoenberg, oh, there's nothing wrong with that guy. Oh no, he's good. Wait, what was he? Oh, you you gonna you gonna say he's he's a bad guy and 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 George and Jason Goodman's a good guy? <laughs> no, they're all creeps. You just found your level. And Dave Acton, enjoy your fame. Enjoy your newfound fame with the with the vapor bat boys. Right? And they'll use you up and spit you out and chew you up. You don't even realize you've been co-opted by these idiots. Fag boy and fag... Now you're, you're, you're right in your level, man. They're right in your back door, too. A bunch of fag boys from L.A. Playing you. Oh, they played you, fucking Dave Acton. I want to believe that you had a little bit of integrity early on. I want to believe that. I want to believe that I want to believe that you believed you were doing the right thing when you cannonballed into George Webb's set. Because <laughs> that's what you did. You bombed his set. <clears throat> hey, they are, Jason Goodman and, 
and Drudge Webb, they're having a good old time on the couch, fucking each other's asses. Uh, they got they got Trish the Dish. Oh, they got some Trish going on. Yeah, but nobody's getting any Trish because they're fucking each other's asses. Uh, but they all wanted Trish, but they said, yeah, fuck it, we're not going to get Trish. So, so, uh, so, Jason, can I fuck your ass? And, you know, Jason was okay with that. Uh, so, but that's, but when you cannonballed into that set, we had to think that maybe you had a speck of integrity, like you were doing it for the, for the greater good. Like you were, you were, you were telling the world, you were blowing the whistle on the world of LARPing, of, of bad guys. My brother's a bad guy and I don't care. He's my brother. I'm going to tell the world about my brother. But really what it is, it's just a very, very, very jealous, broken individual where you tried your whole life to become an actor and bring attention to you for your acting, you failed. And your stupid brother, without even giving it a second thought, was able to attract the crowd where people actually believed him for a little bit. <laughs> for a very short period of time, people actually believed George Webb. Now, George Webb does have a, a group of, a swarm of believers and that's rather crazy. I mean, that's that's something to marvel at. How people can be so fucking stupid after so much time to actually believe anything that the brother says. But Dave wanted to be so much like his brother. Dave envied his brother. When he saw George Webb's fame take off on the internet, Dave said, I fucking hate you, George! I fucking hate you, George! And you, Goodman, I'm going to get you. I'm going to fucking sue you. I'm going to sue you, D George. I'm going to sue you, Jason. I'm Dave Acton Schwagger, and I'm going to fucking sue you. Marcus Conti reporting.